Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Prashant and in this presentation we will talk about cyanosis. Cyanosis is defined as a bluish discoloration of skin and mucous membrane and it may be due to either increased deoxyhemoglobin or hemoglobin derivatives such as methemoglobin and sulfhemoglobin. When these derivatives or deoxyhemoglobin itself accumulate in the vasculature, the areas of the body where this vasculature is present becomes blue and develops a bluish hue. This manifests as cyanosis as seen here. As mentioned, cyanosis is bluish discoloration due to development of reduced hemoglobin more than 4 grams per deciliter and an absolute rather than relative quantity of reduced hemoglobin is important in producing cyanosis. What this means is that if a patient's hemoglobin is 15 grams per deciliter, then when he develops reduced hemoglobin more than 4 grams per deciliter due to whatever reason, as we will see later in this presentation, he develops cyanosis. However, a severely anemic patient with a hemoglobin, say 4, doesn't have enough hemoglobin to produce enough reduced hemoglobin. As a result, this patient may not manifest cyanosis. Conversely, a patient with polycythemia will manifest cyanosis even at levels lower than 4 grams per deciliter. Cyanosis may be either peripheral or central. To understand peripheral cyanosis, we'll make use of this simple graphic wherein this gentleman named Steve wants to go home. One of the reasons why he won't be able to go home using this blue colored road is if the roads are narrow. From a medical perspective, vasoconstriction, shock and cold exposure may cause peripheral cyanosis. Furthermore, if there is a lot of traffic on Steve's way, he won't be able to go home or he may be delayed. From a medical perspective, arterial and venous obstruction can produce peripheral cyanosis. We look for peripheral cyanosis in the tip of the nose, the ear lobule, the nails and palms and soles. On the contrary, we look for central cyanosis in the mucous membranes and the tongue. Central cyanosis on the other hand results from a reduced arterial saturation or reduced partial pressure of oxygen. Central cyanosis may be due to hemoglobin abnormalities such as methemoglobinemia, sulfhemoglobinemia and carboxyhemoglobinemia. Central cyanosis may also be due to reduced arterial oxygen saturation. The causes of decreased arterial oxygen saturation are high altitude, impaired pulmonary function and anatomic shunts. If Steve went to the mountaintop, he would have a low FiO2, which would result in central cyanosis. Impaired pulmonary function, such as due to alveolar hypoventilation or due to impaired diffusion. Finally, anatomic shunts such as congenital heart disease and pulmonary arteriovenous fistula may also cause decreased arterial saturation and cause central cyanosis. Clinical approach to cyanosis includes determining time of onset of cyanosis. A patient who has had cyanosis at a younger age, this could mean that he is having a congenital heart disease. To differentiate between central and peripheral cyanosis, Application of warmth would generally resolve peripheral cyanosis, while oxygen would almost always improve central cyanosis. If clubbing is present, then the patient may either have a congenital heart disease or a lung abscess. And finally, other tests such as measurement of our 
arterial oxygen saturation or spectroscopic measurement of abnormal hemoglobin may also give us the clue to the cause of cyanosis. Differential cyanosis which means that there is cyanosis in the lower limbs but not present in the upper limbs is seen due to patent ductus arteriosus with a shunt reversal. Reverse differential cyanosis is a situation where there is cyanosis in the limbs but the legs are still pink and this is seen in transposition of great vessels with severe pulmonary arterial hypertension. The differential diagnosis of cyanosis are few in number. These include amiodarone therapy which can cause bluish pigmentation as seen here, argyria which indicates deposition of silver salts in the skin and finally carbon monoxide poisoning although this is not considered true cyanosis. That's it for our lecture on cyanosis. Thank you and I will see you in the next video.